straight off the heels of my review of the American Blade Works Model 1, I received the American Blade Works Model 2. The American Blade Works Model 2 is the next version available from the geniuses over at ABW. And there are some interesting changes with this model. First, you see it has titanium scales. It's a liner lock, so it's nested liners. The blade is now a Warncliffe profile blade in Magna Cut versus 20 CV. And it has this almost uh, Art Deco-ish sort of milling on here with these lines. And overall, it's a really nice knife. The size of it in my hands, you can see, is a good size for somebody with double extra large uh, hand size. And you can choke up on it very comfortably. He's provided this nice curvature and transition, much like how he did with the American Blade Works Model 1. And overall, this is just another really great successful knife from American Blade Works. Uh, I have to say, everything that you know they have put out, I really appreciate. I'm sure you guys can hear this, but this thing fires out with some real strong authority. It's got a really good detent, and it just feels really quality, feels really premium. Now, when I last did my review, I actually said that the backspacer uh, in the Model 1 was titanium. I was incorrect about that. It's actually steel, as you can see, my Olight sticks to it. And that's the same case here with the Model 2. Uh, however, it does have the same pocket clip as the Model 1, which you can see, if I can have them side by side here, almost the exact same profile, slightly different finish. The one on the Model 2 is just ever so slightly glossier, in my opinion. Uh, overall, there's very little to critique about this knife. Honestly, um, I have heard that there it has gone through an extensive set of revisions. It has been worked on kind of over and over. And this thing just ergonomically feels excellent in hand. The, the sort of uh, rounding of the corners, it just makes it kind of just... I don't know how to explain it. It just kind of melts into your hand a bit. I can feel the, the pocket clip a little bit more on the Model 2 versus the Model 1, but it's not a hot spot feel. It's just I can feel its presence a little more, and I'm not entirely sure why. It may be the, um, the distance from the base of the knife, uh, the base of the handle, like uh, I'll show you what I'm doing. I'm kind of overlaying them one on top of the other and maybe the position of the pocket clip on the Model 2 is just like a few millimeters or like, yeah, maybe a few millimeters lower and it may be protruding, it is protruding up just a hair more, I would say. Uh, you know what? Let's verify that just to be sure. Got my trusty scale and I can actually be quite conclusive about this. So I'm going to tell you in uh, millimeters because then we can get like really precise. But this guy is sticking out about 4.5 millimeters and on the model one yeah, it's sticking out for, yeah, 4.0 millimeters. So it's about a half a millimeter taller, and maybe that's why. You'd be surprised from, you know, a design and manufacturing perspective, particularly with something like this, 
that that half a millimeter actually can make a difference in your experience but as i said like i can feel its presence uh, but it's not a hot spot on any level overall you know the worn cliff is done really well on this particular model too uh, and i i don't know if that's ever going to change but it doesn't have the grind lines on the blade like we saw with the model one here uh, you can see that there is some distinct lines here that were done in the machining process which i really dig uh, those are not here uh, but overall a very attractive knife uh, very very utilitarian it maintains the language of the first model one it feels like this is a different a different design but still has the same sort of character you see this nice long curvature from front to back and this the handle shape is appropriately redesigned in order to accommodate the Warncliffe profile blade He's done also a good job here of utilizing as much uh, blade area as he can. And with uh, the titanium and the nested liners, he's mounted the, the pocket clip directly to those. Whereas with the micarta and the nested liners, he uh, mounted the pocket clip to the back spacer, which created a little bit of this gap, which as I said in my first video, I, I actually don't mind that. I see the utility in that decision making. Um, but with this one, for anybody who really had any concerns, uh, this one really maximizes the blade, uh, the, the amount of blade area that you can get. And there's no risk, like I'm jamming my finger in here. There's no risk of catching the tip on that Warncliffe blade. Overall, this is really, really nice. My, from like a, a design perspective, the only thing that I kind of miss between the two is I really like this sort of almost perfect circle rounded profile that the Model 1 has. And I kind of wanted to see that here but it's not a, ne a necessity by any means. Uh, I think that this, as I said, has this really nice sort of Art Deco-ish profile. And as a cutting implement, it's executed beautifully. I mean, really, uh, if you followed my last American Blade Works video, the design language for this company is that of like, utility purposefulness and and sort of uh functionality right uh but with this model 2 they've elevated it to a new level of decoration and sort of beauty and i can honestly say that this is just a very very elegant you know sort of utility useful american product you know, uh, there's very few brands I feel that are embodying like American kind of character in their product better than American Blade Works. And it really, uh, it really is striking when you get it in hand and when you really feel it, it feels like a, a quality solid object. Now, the Model 2, because of the titanium versus, say, like my Model 1 in the micarta, is heavier. That's to be expected. But, again, not uh, unnecessarily so. It's, it's reflective of the materials and the, the fact that it's using a nested liner kind of system. Uh, now, as far as criticisms are concerned 
I do wonder about the use of Magna Cut. Um, and that's, that's really maybe my only critique here. I am a big fan of Magna Cut, actually. I think it's a, it's a really excellent uh, blade steel option if used in the right scenario. And I, the thing that I do know about the Magna Cut blade here is that it is properly heat treated to 64 HRC. Uh, now, it, the Magna Cut does have a range of acceptable HRCs depending on your purpose, but for what most people want out of Magna Cut, 64 HRC is kind of the sweet spot. Having said that, uh, this blade is a little bit on the thicker side. Uh, it's coming in at about three millimeters, or if you guys want freedom units, uh, it's coming in at 0 0.123, 0 0.1225. And that is, in my opinion, uh, a touch thick for what I would assume is the kind of ideal place for a Magna Cut. Uh, we see, so Magna Cut has a higher degree of toughness and edge stability over steels like 20CV and so forth, which in my opinion makes it an ideal blade steel. Uh, but what that is meant to provide is the ability to go thinner, right? Like, think... Benchmade bug out or TRM Atom, like knives with blade steel that that's that thin can really benefit from having a tougher and uh, a, a tougher blade steel with better edge stability. One thing that could be done, I do believe, with this um, this model two is actually to increase the edge angle. And that's another benefit of Magna Cut. So while this thing is most likely ground at about a 20 degree, like uh, secondary edge bevel, I think you could probably lay that back to 10, maybe even 15 degrees if you really wanted to go crazy. And it would still maintain its ideal sort of properties. So that is a potential advantage for using Magna Cut here on this guy. If you really wanted to take the sliciness to a next level, you do have that opportunity. Uh, now, having said that, is this the knife slicey? Yes, absolutely it is. It is a really, really well done blade with really good geometry. I have no complaints about it. And... You know, as I said, you guys, like American Blade Works is probably one of my most favorite brands right now from the American manufacturing side of things. Uh, if you guys haven't checked them out, these two are absolute stunners. They're absolutely gorgeous knives. And really, it's hard to beat these for EDC and for the price. Of anything out there so guys I I'm not chilling for these for American Blade Works I have no relationship with them I'm just so impressed with the fit finish and execution that I I highly recommend them so go check them out pick one up for yourself you'll see what I'm talking about God bless America <laughs>